Waiting for the Rain, 1987, a novel by Sheila Gordon, a South African-born American emigre, tells the story of two boys from different racial backgrounds growing up under apartheid. This was Gordon's fourth book, following her time living in Johannesburg, London, and later New York City, where she resided until her death in 2013. Waiting for the Rain earned critical acclaim for its vivid, evocative portrayal of South Africa, allowing young readers to feel the emotional weight of apartheid's injustices. The novel won the 1987 Jane Addams Children's Book Award, recognizing it as the best children's book of the year for promoting social justice. Its themes include friendship, political racism, educational disparity, and white supremacy. The story opens with 10-year-old Tango, a black Afrikaner, overhearing his best friend Fricky, a white Afrikaner, talking about inheriting a large farm from his uncle, Um Koos. Tengo jokes about his own future, imagining himself as a boss boy under Fricky's rule. The narrative highlights the deep bond the two share, despite their vastly different lives. Fricky frequently visits the farm, and Tengo enjoys hearing his friend's stories about school. At the same time, Tengo is painfully aware that, because of his skin color, he is denied the same educational opportunities as free schooling is only available to white children. Although Fricky doesn't enjoy school, he attends for free, while Tengo is not even allowed to go. As a more observant and reflective person, Tengo's thoughts are explored more deeply in the novel, while Fricky, less self-aware, is often oblivious to the inequalities around them. For example, Fricky never questions why Tengo must eat leftovers in the yard while he enjoys the comforts of a large house. Tengo's mother prepares food for Fricky's family, but is restricted from spending much time in the mansion. As Tengo matures, he begins to question why white people are automatically entitled to wealth and education, while black people are relegated to servitude. He starts to realize that being a boss boy under anyone, even his best friend, is not an honor, but a degradation. Tengo's awareness of apartheid's unfairness grows as he reflects on his own limitations. He needs a pass to travel, while Fricky can roam freely across the country without such restrictions. His curiosity intensifies after his mother arranges for a friend to give him old textbooks. Through these books, Tengo learns that Fricky and his uncle often misrepresent history to justify their privileged status. As the boys enter their teenage years, Tengo works tirelessly to save enough money to attend school in Johannesburg. Despite the challenges of attending a substandard school, Tengo excels, driven by his determination to succeed. During the next three years, Tengo grows immensely, nearing the end of his college education when a boycott against the university erupts. The boycott, led by those opposing apartheid, quickly gains his full support. One day, as he heads to campus, Tengo finds military personnel attempting to suppress a student-led protest against apartheid. In a moment of confusion, Tengo is briefly detained. After his release, he learns that the Black Students University has been shut down for a year. The novel then delves into the social history that led to apartheid's rise. By the time they reach adulthood, Tengo and Fricky have lost all contact. Though Tengo briefly considers taking up arms in the fight for racial equality, he ultimately believes that changing opinions and attitudes through education is a more lasting and effective way to improve society than resorting to violence. However, because of the ongoing protests, he misses the university entrance exams. Fortunately, one of Tengo's cousins works for the African National Congress and offers him a chance to study in the United States. The cousin promises to help Tengo graduate from an American university if he agrees to emigrate. Tengo accepts. Before he leaves for America, Tengo attends the funeral of several children who were killed by soldiers during the protest. In a display of appalling disrespect, another group of soldiers arrives to disperse the mourners. Enraged by the authorities' disregard for the lives of black children, Tengo, along with others, picks up a stone and throws it at the soldiers. The soldiers retaliate by opening fire. Tengo flees in panic. As he runs, the situation worsens. A soldier is shot and killed in the crowd, intensifying the soldier's anger. Tengo is pursued by one soldier and hides in an alcove, narrowly escaping. When the soldier passes, Tengo strikes him multiple times with a metal club he finds on the ground, taking the soldier's gun. 
When he looks down at the soldier's terrified face, he realizes, to his shock, that the soldier is none other than Fricky. The two old friends reflect on their past, recalling the farm and their shared childhood. Their conversation quickly turns to apartheid, with Fricky struggling to understand why the black community is rising up. He says he must defend his family from death threats. Tengo explains that they are not seeking to kill, but only to be granted equal rights. Fricky insists he already has equal rights. Tengo shakes his head in disagreement. In the end, both men agree to go their separate ways. Tengo, now armed, does not kill Fricky, and Fricky, in turn, does not alert his platoon about Tengo's actions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.